Hey everybody, Steve here. Uh, we're continuing on with God and His Word with Matthew chapter 22. This is Jesus speaking about the parable of the wedding banquet. Now, if we back up to chapter 21, and starting with verse 23, we see where Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, teaching in the temple. It was full. I mean, if you were Jewish, you went to the temple because everything revolved around God and His Word and their, the way their government, their theocracy, and the way their, their social welfare system, it all centered around uh, the synagogue. And there the, uh, the Pharisees and teachers of the law and all those people, they questioned Jesus' authority. And Jesus goes on to a series of answers and statements, and this is one of them, the parable of the wedding banquet said, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent the servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Jesus is specifically talking to the religious leaders back then, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, those who did not acknowledge him as the son of David, as the Messiah, the Savior, uh, whom all the prophets and John the Baptist uh, prophesied about. They just didn't get it. Um, God sent his son because he so loved the world, his only begotten son, to the nation of Israel because they were rebellious and sinful and they turned their hearts from God. And he had prepared the wedding feast. He wants them to be with him in heaven. But there's a problem because their sin is standing in the way of that. And he sent his servants, or those, the prophets, the priests, the people who believe and follow God's word with word, thought, and deed, and don't water down the truth of God's word, and to invite them to come, but they refused. They refused because of pride. They refused because they had better things to do than to be obedient to God and his word. It says in verse 4, Then he sent some servants to say, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. I mean, this was... It's now. Now is the day of salvation. My oxen and fatted cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. God is pleading. He doesn't wish that any should, uh, should be, you know, fall into hell. And it ends up, but they paid no attention and went off. One to his field. Hmm. Another to his business. In other words, they, they go back to the things of the world and what they deem as important. Mam and money. Uh, their business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. How many times do we see that? Of course, back then we know that the religious leaders of the day, they plotted to kill Jesus. And they thought that they were, uh, you know, they'd be rid of him for, for good. But unfortunately, uh, uh, they played right into the hands of a powerful and almighty God. And the king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And what we see here is that those who are disobedient to God, that there will, be, there will be a time of reckoning. And that he's going to balance the books and everything is going to be settled. He's going to have the sheep on one hand and the goats at the other and they're not going to be in the same place. So anyway, we continue on and that, uh, notice that he destroys those murderers and burned their city. He's going to destroy everything that they rely on. He's going to burn away uh, the things of the world, the things of the flesh, because we know that those things ultimately lead to death. And that's what they're going to be left holding. If they don't repent, uh, they will perish, as Jesus preached. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. They didn't deserve to come because they totally rejected the king, they totally rejected his servants, and they even killed his son, as we see in other passages. Then go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. And we see this, is, is, it's confirmed by the rest of Scripture, we see that Jesus came and he was sent to the nation of Israel. He sent to, the Israel, to Israel first, but then they rejected him, and then the message went out to the Gentiles, it went out to everybody else. Um, Anyway, it says, so the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. So those who proclaimed to be good, those who were bad and knew that they were bad, and everything in between, everyone is invited to the banquet. It's just as God said. He doesn't, he doesn't wish that any should perish, but all should come to salvation. What we see then is, but when the king came to see the guests, he noticed that a man who was not wearing wedding clothes... 
How did you get in here without wetting clothes? The man was speechless. You see, there's back then you had to you couldn't just show up in anything. There were certain clothes that you had to wear, and you had to take an action. You're here's what happened is that God loved us so much that he gave an invitation to the wedding banquet. God initiated that and he also initiated that he first loved us. So now what we're doing when we come to Jesus Christ we're convicted of our sin, we repent, we confess and we ask forgiveness of our sin and then as we are a new creature in Christ we go and sin no more. So in other words all the things we did before, all the other sins it's wiped clean. We look in Scripture and we see where God says in His Word, where He says that uh, I will remember their sins no more, that uh, they're thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. And at 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of all our sins. And so that's what's being made a new creature in Christ. Our sins are forgiven. We're not the old creature that had the sins and the judgments upon us. We Behold, all things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. Because now we have the opportunity to continue on in Jesus Christ and walk with Him and to go through that purifying process. But here in this parable, somebody claimed that they were ready, but they didn't respond in the manner that they were supposed to. They didn't repent, they didn't confess, they didn't ask forgiveness, or they continued on in sin after they had been forgiven. And so they were rebellious, and uh, their heart, his heart was hard, just like the Israelites. But God says is that if you would come back, humble yourselves, repent, I will take you back. I will be your God, and you will be my people. But again, this man did not do what he was supposed to do. And so what does God do? Just like in the parable, the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So those that are on the outside are those who are the rebellious, the sinners, the ones who disobey God, the ones who are not obedient because Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. But those commands are not done out of legalism or a list of rules to try to gain or work our way to heaven because that work was done by Jesus Christ on the cross and we are saved by grace. But the word also says that as believers now, since we're new creatures, that God writes his laws on our hearts of flesh and our beating hearts and our being and not on tablets of stone. In other words, and Jesus resides in us. There's, there's other passages we talked about where it says that, that he abides in us and we abide in him. We renew our minds and we do all that so that we can have a closer, intimate walk in relationship with Him, to cast off the things of the world, to cast them as a loss for the sake of knowing Christ even more. So when we get to the point that those who are disobedient, those who can claim and say, hey, uh, you know, they can say all the right things, they can do all the right things, but if you don't do what God tells you to do, you're walking in rebelliousness and you're walking in sin, and we know how that ends up. Closes out verse 14, for many are invited, but few are chosen. And those that are chosen, we see other scriptures where it talks about there'll be people who say, well, Lord, didn't we uh, prophesy in your name and cast out demons and do all these other things? Lord, Lord, he's going to turn to them and say, depart from me, I never knew you. Because I wasn't in you and you weren't in me. You might have had my word, but you didn't have me. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And it's the evidence of him being in you that pours out to those people around you. To minister, to witness, to testify of Jesus Christ and what he's done for you in your life. To give as you see need, to take care of orphans or widows or anybody that needs it. In other words, we're to do God's will and his good works. Only got a few seconds left, but that's what we're talking about here in Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 through 14. So anyway, I hope that you take this and to see if you are walking in the faith and that if you are worthy of going to the banquet. Anyway, take care. God bless. Peace.